How are you watching The Advocate? A channel where we answer the interesting, the fascinating and the intriguing questions that you have about law, life and society. Today's question is, where are the top five places in the world where there are no laws? At number one is Bertawil. Bertawil is an area located between the southern border of Egypt and the northern border of Sudan. It is the only habitable area in the world that is not yet controlled by any recognised government. It is what is known in Latin as terra nullius, a legal term which means nobody's land. However, in June 2014, a brave and daring farmer from Virginia and the United States of America named Jeremiah Heaton decided he was going to do something about this. Now, Jeremiah Heaton made a promise to his six-year-old daughter that she would one day become a real-life princess. In order to fulfill this promise to his six-year-old daughter, he made the treacherous journey from Virginia all the way to Bertha Will. When he arrived in Bertawil, he claimed the land for himself. He then, of course, did the natural thing. He went onto Facebook to let the world know of his newfound claim, stating, From this day forth, Bertawil shall now be known as the Kingdom of North Sudan, with himself becoming the sovereign monarch and head of state, and his daughter becoming a real-life crown princess. However, unsurprisingly though, Jeremiah Heaton's claim to birds of will is yet to be recognised by any other international government and he is still waiting to receive his invitation to join the United Nations, but perhaps they got lost in the post. And number two is ungoverned Afghanistan. Ungoverned Afghanistan sits between the eastern border of Afghanistan and the northwestern border of Pakistan. It's an area that is supposed to be controlled by the federal government of Pakistan. However, the constitution of Pakistan, which contains rules which were put in place by the British from 1902, means that the Supreme Court and the High Court of Pakistan have no jurisdiction in the area known as ungoverned Afghanistan. This basically means that the Pashtun tribes of ungoverned Afghanistan are a free and autonomous people, free to decide their own laws and decide who has broken the law and who has not. However, despite the seemingly desirable freedom that the people of ungoverned Afghanistan enjoy, it has come with serious consequences, leaving the area under the control of warlords, tyrants and bandits, reminiscent of the days of the American frontier in the wild wild west. Therefore, it's no surprise that 79% of the inhabitants of ungoverned Afghanistan wish for the area to be controlled by the Pakistani military. And number three is Western Sahara. Western Sahara is a land which comprises mainly of desert as far as the eye can see. It's bordered by Mauritania, Morocco and Algeria. Now the land was formerly ruled by Spain up until 1975, when Spain relinquished control of the area to both Mauritania and Morocco at the same time. This of course led to a dispute which exists up until this day between Mauritania and Morocco over who truly owns the land. This has meant that the Sahari people who live in Western Sahara have no ruler or form of government and they are regarded by the United Nations as a non-self-governing territory. And number four is the Earth's southernmost continent. This of course can only be the one and only Antarctica. With temperatures way beyond the realm of human habitation, Antarctica has remained uncolonised for centuries. Therefore, if you desire freedom from man-made laws and are willing to endure sub-zero temperatures, and Antarctica may just be the place for you. Before you go ahead and quit your day job, you should be aware of the Antarctic Treaty. The Antarctic Treaty is an agreement between 12 of the world's most powerful nations as to how the land of Antarctica should be preserved for future generations to enjoy. So make sure you have a quick look at the Antarctic Treaty, just to make sure that you don't step on anyone's toes. And number five, last but not least, is the largest place on earth where there are no man-made laws. This of course is international waters, also known as the high seas and the free seas. Now the principle of international waters rose to prominence in the 17th century, during a time where countries such as Spain and Portugal claimed control over the Earth's oceans, which meant that you could not travel out at sea without their say so. Now this did not make good business sense for other nations who were looking to trade between ports like the Dutch. The Dutch were advocates of ancient Roman law, Ancient Roman law states that no one nation should be able to control the Earth's oceans. Now this principle is so important, it's part of the reason why USA went to war with the British in 1812, when the British attempted to prevent American sailors from freely travelling the oceans of the Earth to trade with the French, as the British were at war with Napoleon and the French Empire at the time. 
So the reason why they accepted that a nation's laws can only extend 12 miles from a shore. However, a nation can enforce its import laws, export laws and immigration laws 24 miles from its shore. However, before you go ahead and quit your day job to become a pirate, as the likes seen in the Hollywood blockbuster Captain Phillips, you should be aware of the principle of universal jurisdiction. The principle of universal jurisdiction states that a nation can prosecute alleged piracy no matter where it is in the world, as long as the alleged piracy is regarded as being so serious that international borders can be temporarily ignored for the sake of justice. If you have any more questions you want us to answer, post them in the comment section below. Until next time, take care, don't forget to read the fine print and subscribe for more videos from The Advocate. So say for example you're making a documentary about Michael Jordan, you can freely use clips of Michael Jordan if you are using them for the purpose of informing your audience, educating your audience or reporting about Michael Jordan.